Quicksort recursively chooses an element called pivot from a given collection and partition the collection using that pivot. The partition function rearranges the elements such that the pivot element is in its final sorted position. Elements smaller than the pivot are on the left side of the pivot. Elements larger than the pivot are on the right side of the pivot. Repeat the steps on the left collection and on the right collection. I will use light blue to represent the smaller elements and dark blue to represent the larger elements. In this video, I will go through this example step by step to see how Quicksort sorts the collection and afterwards I will present an implementation of Quicksort in C++. This is Khaled and welcome to Quicksort algorithm. Get the input collection and then call Quicksort. Choose a pivot, the element 7. I will choose the last element in the collection to be the pivot element. Partition the collection using the pivot 7. All elements smaller than 7 are on the left. All elements greater than 7 are on the right. After partition, the pivot 7 is sorted. Call quicksort on the left sub collection. Choose the pivot, the element 2, the last element in the sub collection. Partition the sub collection using the pivot 2. All elements smaller than 2 are on the left, and all elements greater than 2 are on the right. After partition, the element 2 is sorted. Call quicksort on the left sub collection. The sub collection has only one element, hence, it's done, and the element 1 is sorted. Call quicksort on the right sub collection and repeat the steps. Choose pivot partition, and quicksort, and so on. Let's now watch together the algorithm as it sorts the rest of the elements. At this point, all the elements are sorted. Let's not forget the sorting occurs in place. Hence, let's collect the elements together. And here is the final sorted collection. Let's see now how we can implement quicksort in C++. Here I have the quicksort template function. It accepts a first iterator and a last iterator, exclusive, which represent the collection we want to sort. First, choose the pivot, the last element. Partition the collection using the pivot. I will come to the partition function in a minute. Call quicksort for the left subcollection, excluding the pivot because it's already sorted. Call quicksort for the right subcollection, excluding the pivot because it's already sorted. And of course, like any recursion function, we need a stopping condition. And here we stop when the subcollection has no more elements. Now let's implement the partition function. The partition function also accepts two iterators to represent the collection and return the iterator to the sorted pivot location. Using the standard library, std partition, the task becomes trivial and std partition needs only that we provide a predicate that it uses to partition the given collection. Using lambda expression, this is also straightforward. The lambda called predicate captured the last element because it's our pivot, gets an input parameter value, return true if the value is less than pivot, false otherwise. Stood partition does not put the last element in its sorted position though, but keeps it in its last position. Hence, we need to swap the pivot, the last element, with the returned iterator from stood partition. And that is the whole algorithm. Finally, to test the algorithm, we can use the following code, which will execute the same steps we have seen in this video. IOTA will fill the vector from 1 to 10 shuffle the collection using the std shuffle algorithm, and finally call our quicksort algorithm. 
Thanks for watching. In the next video, I will present heap sort algorithm in C.